Hi again. Today's topic is forecasting. What we try to do is, is capture some of these aspects in any data set. Uh, the first one being trend. Trend is typically a long-term upward or downward uh, motion in sales or, or whatever it is that you're trying to forecast. Seasonality is uh, a short-term wave. It might have to do with the seasons, like the demand for skis, for example. But it can also be uh, daily demand, like the demand for electric use throughout the day has a seasonal component. Cyclical is also a wave, but it's much longer than the seasonality component. Our economy, for example, uh, is a cyclical in nature, where we have growth periods and recessions. Cyclical is, is, well, the hardest thing for us to forecast. Trend and seasonality are, are easier to forecast. And, of course, random error is impossible to forecast. It's completely random. Um, <clears throat> so what are the assumptions that, that we take when we are forecasting? Well, the main assumption is whatever happened in the past will continue to happen in the future. So if we had some trend, upward trend in the past, that's going to uh, keep going up. If we had some seasonality in the past as a component, that would continue in the future. Of course, this assumes that uh, there aren't any disasters or anything uh, where sales or whatever can just drop off. So the main assumption is whatever happened in the past will continue to happen in the future. Next, I'd like to talk about some forecasting methods. The first one, the easiest one, I think, is called the moving average method. The moving average method. Now, the formula for that is uh, F sub t plus 1, the forecast for the next time period, is equal to the summation as i goes from 1 to n uh, of d sub i, where that's the demand, divided by n. You get to select n. That's the number of periods in the average. For very stable data, your n can be uh, larger. Uh, if it's unstable, you're probably going to want a smaller n. So let's take this example down here. Let's say that we've got three days of sales data. On the first day, we sold 10. The second day, we sold 12. The third day, we sold 11. If we forecast for day number four, here's the forecast over here, it's just the average. 10 plus 12 plus 11 divided by 3 is 11. Okay? Let's say day three, or sorry, day four comes and goes, and we actually sell 13. Our forecast error is 2 because it's the difference, 13 minus 11 is 2. That's the forecast error. We, we underpredicted by 2. But uh, if we want to forecast using the moving average method for day 4, then what we do is it moves down the list, and we add 12 plus 11 plus 13 divided by 3 is now 12. The 10 gets discarded. So we just it's called the moving average because it moves down the list. This is probably the easiest one to understand and most common. A related, related method is called the weighted moving average method. Weighted moving average. Uh, this is very similar. It's forecast for the next time period. It's a summation as i goes from 1 to n, w sub i. Uh, times d sub i, where the w's are the weights for each period. And of course, the, the weights will sum to 1 for, for all the periods. And the d, as before, that's the demand. So let's take the same example. Let's say that we have weight on the most recent is 0.5, the weight on the second most recent is 0.3, and the weight on the oldest is 0.2. Now, with the regular moving average method, the weights are implicitly the same at 0.333. But here, we get to set our weights explicitly. So what we do, to forecast for period 4, we take 0 0.5 times 11, plus 0.3 times 12, plus 0.2 times the oldest is 10, is 11.1. Day 4 comes and goes, we actually sell 13, we underpredict it still, but our forecast error is now 1.9 instead of 2. Uh, what's the forecast for the next period? Well. 0.5 times the newest is 13, plus 0.3 times 11, 
plus 0.2 times 12. The third method is the exponential smoothing method. This has a fancy name, but it's probably actually one of the easiest methods. The forecast for the next period is alpha times the demand plus 1 minus alpha times our most recent forecast. Alpha is the smoothing constant. It must be between 0 and 1. It's typically somewhere between 0.2 and 0.5 in that range. So let's say, for example, we set our alpha equal to 0.2. So that in, in a sense, is the is the uh, the weight on the most recent demand, and 0.8, 1 minus that, is the weight on all the previous demand. And it goes down exponentially then. So let's take the same example. We've got 10, that's the forecast for the second period. Okay, let's make that assumption. 12 is the demand for day 2. So now we get this forecast by taking 0.2, the alpha times the most recent demand, plus 0.8 times 10 is 10.4. Likewise, uh, this one here is 0.2 times 11, plus 0.8 times 10.4 to get 10.52. And likewise, for period 4, it's 0.2 times 13, plus 0.8 times 10.52 is 11.02. So it just goes down the list. The data requirements on this are pretty simple because all you need is the most recent forecast and the most recent data. Everything else can be thrown away. So, the forecast error then, 12 minus 10 is 2, 11 minus 10.4 is 0.6, 13 minus 10.52 is 2.48. If we take the summation of the forecast, we get 5.08. Summation of the absolute forecast is the same. And then the forecast error squared is 10.51. We're going to be using these on the next slide to uh, show some measures of forecast error. The simplest one is the mean absolute deviation. Okay, we take the summation of the absolute forecast errors. 5.08 divided by n, which is 3, is 1.69. So on average, we, our forecasts were off by 1.69 units. Of course, we'd like to minimize the mean absolute deviation. The second one is the mean squared error. It's the summation of the forecast error squared divided by n minus 1 is 5.25. Well, that's in squared units, so I like this one better. But uh, anyway, we, we still try to minimize the mean squared error. The next one is the mean absolute percent error. Uh, the summation of the absolute forecast errors divided by the summation of the demand. So you can see uh, 5.8 is the absolute, summation of the demand is 36. Our forecasts on average were off by 14% then. The cumulative error is just the summation of the uh, forecast errors. This is 5.08, this is positive, so the forecast is biased, low. We're under predicting here. Now, when there's significant trend, like in this diagram here, the uh, exponential smoothing, the moving average, and the weighted moving average are going to be predicting down here when they should be predicting up here. Perhaps regression analysis would be a, a, a better approach if, if you have significant trend. The average error is known as the bias. Okay, it's E bar, E over N is 1.69. You'd like to get that as close to zero as possible. That's the best. The final one is called the tracking signal. It's the E over the MAD that we've already calculated, 3.01. This is done over time, and usually the control limits on the tracking signal are somewhere between plus and minus 2 to plus and minus 5. So uh, if you go outside those control limits that you set, there's something wrong with your forecast, and you should recalibrate You'll also probably want to watch the regression video because uh, we'll use time series regression to predict into the future. But again, we're assuming that whatever happened in the past will continue to happen in the future.